Hello, everybody, and welcome to Melody of the Maelstrom, where a bunch of real-life bards play Dungeons & Dragons. Before we roll the starting titles, we do have a few sponsors that we need to shout out. Uh, the first being D&D Beyond. If you want to have all of your resources conveniently in one place, and you hate math, look no further. D&D Beyond has all of the digital resources you could possibly need, including books, dice, and the ability to homebrew to your heart's content. Our second sponsor is Effects May Vary, an awesome local band from Newmarket, Ontario, and we specialize in making sure you always have your daily prescription for hard rock. Feel free to listen to our music on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you're most comfortable listening to your favorite tunes. And feel free to follow us on Facebook for show dates and announcements. And as always, individual effects may vary. Uh, there's also our Patreon, where we have a tier for every letter... Uh, bleh, Gosh, I was doing so well. We, <laughs> we have a tier for every level of generosity. One includes being shouted out at the end of this game, as well as all of the others, or voice acting lessons with one of the talented players in one of our other games. And of course, we have merch. If you want a sweater, a shirt, or maybe even a mouse pad, or our new, uh, wow, pint glasses. That's what they're called. My brain just, just turned off. I apologize. Uh, with that awesome Dire Bear logo on it, then go ahead and check out our merch page where you can fund whatever, where you can find whatever it is your heart desires. And um, Honestly, you got this. I nope, nope. It's <laughs> listen. I don't know how I managed to fuck up reading. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess this would probably be a pertinent time to say I took a law exam today. So I apologize to everyone if my brain is not functioning the way that it's supposed to, because it's dead. Um, it's no, it wasn't like the the licensing exam or anything. It was just a, it was ethics. So let's keep the party <laughs> out of court. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, and with that, let's get those uh, title credits rolling. So, last we left off, the party had a very interesting conversation in the back room of the pub where one of the individuals mentioned that they just so happened to have a piece of paper which, um, corresponding with the death of the colonel and her daughter, Sergeant Nix, um, would result in a very large amount of funds going into one particular party member's pocket. And after further investigation, um, they had multiple conversations and um, s and kept Nix from being arrested for tampering with a crime scene and assault after she wasn't very happy about being arrested. Um, and after paying a pretty large amount of funds for her bail, uh, brought her back to the tavern um, where a conversation ensued and the party was split with two members going off to meet the Thieves' Guild, and the rest of the party waiting to see what will transpire. So, with that, I think what we're going to do is we are going to... Because we, we finished with um, Kaelin and Fidget. So I think we're just going to pick up just organically right there, right where we left off. Perfect. Uh, so... Right. Talon, can you give me a perception check with advantage? Oh, yeah. Out of the gate. <laughs> Roll some dice. Sorry. Roll some dice for me. Choose your fate wisely. 
Um, also, just a little housekeeping thing. Um, from last session, I still have a point of luck, and you guys still have a an automatic success. Okay. Because we didn't use them last session, and they're still valid. And I'm the DM, so I said so. <laughs> 14 for the first one. Where did that go? Oh, of course it goes out of the light where I can't see it. Uh, 14 for the second one. Oh, okay. So plus, I think it's six. It's either six or four. I got to find my phone. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, so six or four, uh, either of those succeed essentially. Yeah. So, um, as you guys are making your way away from the, uh, the boar and the broad where the rest of the party, um, was conversing, um, you turned to fidget and asked fidget whether or not he was able to hear through his small homunculus that he left behind on Bavidius' shoulder. Yep. And he immediately turned to you and said, nope. Uh, so you then, um are moving through the streets, and as it gets later in the day, essentially, um, the raucous energy of the party just... You don't you don't think that it could get worse. You don't think that people could get more drunk, more belligerent. But they do. Of course they do. Um, so there's drunk people, like, stumbling everywhere. They've got their arms around each other's shoulders, like, drunkenly singing um, some absolutely unrecognizable tune, because there is no tune... You could probably put all that in a bucket. It's just a conglomeration of notes. All of them are singing different things. I don't think they. Yeah. I don't think they all decided on a song before they started. You know, one person just starts singing one tune, and another person just starts singing something entirely different. All I've the, heard all playing sign in a bar uh, on New Year's Eve. I know. Yeah, all, all the all the tempos <laughs> are off. <laughs> like once in four four, once in four six, and oh, it's, it's like, like sound it's check. Yeah, it's sound stop. check. <laughs> just sound show. check. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guitarist is trying to tune, and the drummer's like, "This is my moment." Because <laughs> 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 it is. I've been attacked. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the perception check was to see if you could um pick up on all of the, uh, the very subtle. You, you know pretty much where you're going. Um, yeah. But essentially, how the Thieves' Guild operates is the majority of the thieves in the city know where it is. But it is also very, very important to pay attention to all of the very subtle markings on the path there. Um, because what happens is if something goes down or it's not safe to go there or, you know, it's being watched or something... Um, all of those very subtle symbols change to let you know whether or not it is safe to go there, whether or not you should be careful, or whether or not you should just, like, stay away. Um, so right now, as you're kind of glancing where you know all of these symbols are located, um, you pretty easily notice that it's, it's, it's at the... It's this particular marking that means that it's being watched. And to be careful. Proceed with caution, essentially. Fidget. Now, for the record, I don't. Right, I don't notice any of this. No. Nope. No. So I'm going to quietly alert him. Fidget, you need to step exactly as I step, and just make yourself. May, I know it's easy for you because you're smaller, but you need to make yourself disappear in plain sight okay. to go where we're going because we're being watched. It's be where we're going is being watched. Uh, I I give I give Talon a sideways glance. You think this is my first time going to a thieves guild? Not at all. But it's the first time going to this thieves guild. All right, I'll follow your lead. All right. So I just go about as if. I'm walking somewhere, not really giving any, like, just not giving any direction to anyone who would be watching other than Fidget. Okay. Um, so essentially, Fidget, you have a, you have a bit of a harder time, just, um, so, just because you have to thread around people's feet and between them, because everybody just kind of parts around Talon, 
um, but they don't really see you, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so the occasion, so you're you're trying place, really, really hard to step precisely where he steps, but then the occasional, you know, drunken knee just like impacts the side of your shoulder or your head, and you're like, fucking shit. <laughs> Goddamn drunk people. <laughs> um, another day for me, though. But he he easily um, just kind of weaves you through the crowd and just um, kind of gets away from uh, just the general populace. And you guys find yourself just weaving left and right between alleyways. Um, and as you guys go deeper into um, the industrial area, um, you realize that like you're leaving the party behind. All of the the majority of the population is is in the end um, the shopping district, and you guys are now making your way towards the edge of the shopping district that just borders the industrial area where all of the the factories and everything are. Okay. Um, can both of you roll me a perception check? <laughs> Ten or Ten? eight all together. Natural 20. Do I still get Natural advantage? Natural 20. Now I have a minus one to my perception. Um, <laughs> it's do I still get, 20 a, nonetheless. get an advantage? Uh, no. So oh. previously you you knew where those symbols were. Yeah. Um, so really you got advantage because you 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 were you really knew in the direction you were supposed to be looking. Um, but uh. this isn't particularly like you don't really know what you're looking for um in this particular situation. And um Fidget, you see this individual first. Um, so the the individual that you see is like uh, they come out of like from behind a bunch of crates, and it surprises you to see someone that is pretty much your height. Um, they're wearing a little black cloak that's like pulled over their ears, but you can see these large bat-like ears that are already they're just kind of out of the hood of the cloak because the hood's not big enough. Um, uh, can I make an assumption as to uh, background? Is this a goblin? Yeah, this is a goblin. <laughs> um, and so uh, the the per, the goblin pulls <laughs> their hood down, um, and uh, you see this very like this deep green skinned goblin, um, and they appear to be. It's really hard to determine goblin age, but if you were to hazard a guess, this is like a a young adult-ish kind of goblin. Um, uh, it, it has these, like, luminescent yellow eyes with these deep brown irises. Um, and you can see that there's this, like, jet black hair that's kind of just braided um, and then has a bunch of bones and stuff threaded into it. Um, and the goblin smiles at you with these sharp little teeth and um, looks up at Talon. This is, uh, you, uh, you rang? Yes. This is. I'm, I'm assuming we've decided this is Gerard, right? This is Gerard. Yes. All right. Ah, uh, Gerard. I, for, I thought that I said you recognized this person as Gerard, but I. I think you I just said not. it in my head. <laughs> I just said it in my brain, which is. <laughs> your which brain is very says, useful. I'm going to take this. Super useful, right? Like, it's, yeah, yeah, I'm it just going to... It is the first place it ought to be said. I'm just going to keep this and internalize it rather than sharing it with the group because that just that just seems way more helpful. Um, yes, uh, this is Gerard. Ah, uh, Gerard, my friend. Uh, you didn't say that you were going to be bringing somebody with you. Uh, this is a less than ideal circumstance but he's with me he just uh flashes you this wicked grin and you can see all of these yellowing um very sharp teeth hi oh he's talking to you fidget <laughs> what's up i mean it's usually that way but <laughs> 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 I'm just tagging along. Okay. Um. What What do you want, D Gerard? What's, what's going somewhere on? safe we can talk. I know. I know that we're being watched. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hold on. And he like climbs. You can see him like scamper up onto the crates, and he like totally just looks around. 
before he motions for you guys to like dart into the alley and then he just scampers off of the crates and just all right let's go i follow okay as do i um he goes about 10 feet or so down the alleyway um before he turns and presses his hand against a small area of the wall um, before there's the sharp shifting of stone before a large rectangular section um, big enough for Talon um, slides backwards in the wall and then just moves, like, shifts out of the way. So it's like... It just opens up into a just uh, a small, empty room. All right. I head in. Okay. Uh, follow behind. I'm quite impressed at this point. Okay. Uh, I kind of glance at Taylor and go, how old is this place? Older than I am. How old are you? <laughs> old. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the goblin holds up a little, uh, a finger and like, um, there's a, there's like a pile of torches just in the corner, and he's like just trying to light one <laughs> while the door like slides closed slowly, <laughs> just, <laughs> and he's like just like with the flint and the steel, just trying to light the <laughs> light the torch, and his movement gets a little more frantic as he's try <laughs> as the door gets closer to closing. Uh, <laughs> I believe I, I believe I have the light spell, the middle check. I might just kick that in. I can create flame. I am a tiefling. I have light, so. Okay, yeah, so he's trying to light the torch, and he just gets it, like, you see it spark in the catch, and you just cast light. And he kind of <laughs> gives you this look, like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting, I've been trying to light this for, like, three solid minutes, and you just, you could have, all right. And he doesn't, he doesn't say anything, he says it's all of his face. And then he just kind of walks over and puts the torch in, like, there's, there's two different, like, little circles to put a, to put a torch in. One of them is for a regular sized person, and one of them is, like, for him. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he puts it in the wall. So! Do you want me to lead? I, I got the... Well, no, this is just, a this is the room. Yeah, this is where we're... You said uh, you wanted a safe place to talk. This is a safe place to talk. Gerard, who knew, who else knew about my contract? Uh, buddy, you know I can't tell you that. It's, uh... I think you can. You just don't want to. Uh, uh, well, you know, it's for the for the safety of all of the other, uh, you know, contractors. Well, it's more. I'm interested in who put the contract out. I'm pretty sure the earth is it. And he, like, grabs you by the arm and, like, breaks you over to the corner. He's like, buddy, you know I can't tell you this. You can tell me. If you can't tell him, just tell me. What? No! <laughs> <laughs> I got it all out of the way. It's okay. It's okay. Sons of a goblins. <laughs> Uh, I was like, oh, nobody's, nobody's redeeming anything. We're doing so great. This is fine. Everything is... Mm, it's good. It's good. Can I say something? It's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's Gerard, right? Uh, yeah. Sorry, what, what was your name again? It's not important. It seems to me like we have a bit of a problem here. Because uh, there's two of us. And there's one of you. And I don't know if you're going to be able to find that torch once I put my light out. So <laughs> he, like, reaches over and tugs on your pant leg, and he's like, I like this guy. <laughs> you got some gumption, bud. <laughs> Gerard, I, I assure you, he's being nice. I'm just saying, like, you'd, you'd make a very welcome addition. If I'm not one, looking for a recruit. Then what do you... I, you know, and he turns to Taylor and he's like, you know, I can't tell you, because 
Gerard, and, and you're there gone, are, and then I'm gone, and we're all we're all dead. We're all dead. So respectfully, no. <laughs> I, I quite mean, like. I quite I like mean, my if life. You, if, 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 <laughs> I, I, I know. If, I know certain circumstances could arise where you might tell me and have no other choice. Well, I'm sure that you know that's a that's entirely a possibility. But you wouldn't you wouldn't do that to me. We're... I start to pull my dagger out. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey. I can start with your toes, goblin. See, man, this is why we're friends. <laughs> Okay. Right, right. It is this room secure? I mean, as secure as the rest of them are. So, in other words, they're listening. Come on, man. You know how this works. I know how this works. I know that I'm already in trouble for bringing him here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Char, you had a no. job! Fuck! That's four. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is easy. Potatoes. <laughs> all, it, all it takes is to let me talk for more than ten seconds. And <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it. First thing will occur. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Just add water. Uh, <laughs> or wine. Oh, man. That's <laughs> true. Or rum and coke. <laughs> well, I'm not going to repeat what you just said. So. <laughs> Look, Gerard. I know that I'm already in trouble for bringing him here. I'm willing to face the consequence, but I need to know if I have to go to the to the uh, to the hires, if I have to go to the king of the king of thieves or the leader of the guild, I will. But I need to know it's there's circumstances have arisen. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Uh, no, just a straight persuasion check. Nope, I don't persuade him at all. That's a six. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. It's still not going to be enough, probably, but if it's contested... can't. Don't we have one automatic success? I, are, we do. Are we willing to sacrifice it for this? I don't know. That's Maybe up that's to the that's up to the entire right? group. Yeah. It seems like important information. Yes. Seems okay. Like okay. So if you're all good with it, I'll use it. I'm on board. As am I. Domino. Thumbs up. Rendell. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. I love the way he responds out of character in character. <laughs> right. <laughs> I also love how we're just all kind of fucking. It, it, uh. Kyle! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one wasn't me. Mm. Oh, that's. I just yeah. can't talk out of character. Not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dancing because that wasn't me. I'm going to shut up. I'm not in the room. I'm not oh, supposed know, to be in the room. <laughs> <laughs> we suck at this. My all right, so I'll use the automatic success. When you're in my room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, you're going to use your automatic success. Yes. All right, so then, um... So he kind of looks at you. Okay, how about this? We'll do a little, we'll do a little trades. We'll do a, you know, you get to ask me one question. All right. And I get to ask you one question. That seems fair, right? Deal. And he, like, leans in really close. So what do you want to know? Who hired me? I, I was gonna... I was, I was gonna go first. Oh. Okay, no, no, it's fine. All right. I can't tell you. Because <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> I can tell you who passed the message on to me, but... 
that All I'm right, probably going to get. I mean, I enjoy having skin on my body, so. Ask your question. Oh, cool. I still get to ask my question? Awesome. Yes. Okay. Why are you so interested all of a sudden? I've given you a bunch of contracts, but you've never asked why. So why are you so interested? Well, Gerard, you know my past very well. Yeah. You've known me a long time, and you know what I've lost before. And that I am not willing to lose that again. In any circumstance. So, angles have arisen, circumstances have arisen, that worry me about this job. Okay. But you're halfway there. Why are you worried now? Because I didn't, I did, I wasn't the one who killed the colonel. Sorry, what? I I... wasn't the one who killed her. Uh... That's why I asked who else was given this contract. Because I know as well as you do that we do not share contracts guildwide. Listen. That's still true. You were the only one who got this contract. So if we all thought that you were wildly successful. No. I came here to pat you on the back. She was killed. And I was on my way. I was on my way to carry it out. When I got there, there was a there was a fight. I had to join said fight. And learned of the colonel's demise. I... Okay, it's my turn again. Why the colonel and the sergeant? I... I don't... I don't know. Who... uh, Well, I've asked my question. It is your turn again. But be warned, you're running out of I don't knows. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm painfully aware of that, buddy. Uh, so if you if you didn't know the colonel, uh, who 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 did? You know who did? I don't know who did. We wish they were gone before I got there, before anyone got there. Apparently. There was mention of some of a, another of their co- the uh, another of my now compatriots other cohort had chased them out the window but we don't know where they went tracks led into the into the into Stormfell into the middle of Stormfell in the entertainment district and poof Now, Gerard, and I smile, a devious smile, it is my turn yet again. Who do I need to speak to about the contract? You hand them to me, but I need to speak to the one who took them in the first, took it in the first place. Okay, I know. That's it. Technically, the answer is not. I don't know. Because I do. (laughs) Oh, I I know it's not. I don't know. At this point, the game turns, my friend. No, it doesn't. Um, I'll make make you a deal. (laughs) Okay. All right? Uh I'm a master forger. We'll change your name. We'll get you out of this city. You'll never be known as Gerard again. All you got to do is tell us who gave you this message. Roll me a persuasion check. (laughs) 
Glad I took that as one of my skills. <laughs> and I rolled a six, so I got a ten. Okay. Um, it is a good deal, though. So. <laughs> uh, he looks at you. And then he says, Okay, man, I can totally get, I can get all my bags packed really quick. Um, if you get the paperwork all signed up, and then just get it all drafted, and then I can get on one of the ships, and I can take the paperwork, and I can just go. And we can just... Name first. And he turns to you, <laughs> uh, both of you, and he says, The individual that you're looking for is named Hade. Hade? Hade. Cade Caxo. Cade Caxo. Anything I should know about him? Stay away. That bad, eh? Mm-hmm. What's he look like? Or she? Hey, listen, I'm probably dead just giving you the name, so... <laughs> you start... uh, I haven't written any documents yet. <laughs> Uh, you it, you didn't promise me shit. God damn it! <laughs> <sighs> My diminutive friend. You know that you and I have been good with each other for years. And I will, I, if I can help it, I will not let harm come to you. Uh, I mean, I... I've trusted you entirely up until this point, so... <laughs> we, will get you, we will get you to a ship. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably just gonna stay here about until uh, you, you uh, draft me some new stuff, and then That's a good I'll just plan. be on my way. Fidget, how fast can you do it? Pretty fast. Okay. Take my table off set up all my stuff get a document ready i go uh you just bust out a whole table and you're ready to do <laughs> taxes it's my jam i have a forgery kit like, Pull out your little ink pot your little quill and a bunch yeah. of paper and parchment yeah, and stuff table bigger than he is <laughs> just walking through town with it on his back <laughs> and the, table, like, the table what folds up <laughs> and i pull out a sheaf of notes and i'm like uh city again ah oh, stormfell right 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 stormfell okay uh, is this is this updated? I don't know. It's it's been about six years. I mean, I haven't right? I haven't renewed it, so it's uh, definitely just let just just let them know that this is the one that they had on hand. Okay, that's it. Yeah. You want me to roll on this? I was I was gonna do the paperwork, but I didn't want to wait in the line. You know, it's like so. I get it. That's why they come to me. Super long. It's oh. <laughs> why you only have one office open for an entire city, and they're only open me, from nine until eleven. Her? I tried to work in this. It's it's a nightmare. It's just a nightmare. I can't. So yeah, by the time I get off work, it's like you know I've already missed the stupid line and yeah. Sorry. Uh, date of birth. Uh. <laughs> just pick one. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. And I just write something down. <laughs> Make it up. Pick yeah. yesterday. Good plan. Good plan. I, I I think. I think I'm about 37, I think. <laughs> Again, uh, I haven't renewed the paperwork. The 45. <laughs> <laughs> Should I roll for this? Or is this like a specialty? Um, yeah, so what you're going to do is you're going to give me a... You're going to give me a skill check with your forgery kit. Um, so I'm pretty sure uh, you, the forgery kit is like... Um, and it's sort of an underscore of a, like a sleight of hand or a deception check. That's what I thought, yeah. Uh, so can... you can make me either a deception okay. check or a performance check. And I will let you use either for the rest of the game. Well, they're both the same, but moving then... forward as I level up, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll worry about it then. Uh, but yeah, okay, cool. I... I, this is not a screenshot, I swear to God. Natural 20 again. Really? What? I, 
not making this up, man. I'm not That's trying to be beautiful. dishonest. There's algorithms that just she's like <laughs> just hacking <laughs> the rolling you want thing. Me to like I just want. Guy? I'll, I'll, no, 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 it's a, okay. no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I trust you. I trust you okay. guys entirely. Sweet. So <laughs> just... <laughs> and that's what she learned was her first mistake. No, I'm kidding. You just like, showed me the same screenshot. Like, <laughs> actually, did I did I tell you guys I had a I had a kid try to bribe me a little bit ago? Really? Um, because he rolled four natural twenties in a row, and I called him out on it. <laughs> and then he went out he came behind my screen slid a quarter in front of me and said how about you look the other way <laughs> I like this hustle that's that is cool. awesome <laughs> like, how old is a, this child he was like eight. <laughs> oh my god they so, teach them young yeah. I am now a quarter well, richer I hate the game bro come on uh oh Oh. Come on, man. We you were, were doing so fucking well. <laughs> you trash. We really <laughs> were. We reset it three times ourselves. She doesn't need to know that. He doesn't need to know that. We were he doing fine. Probably figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were doing shit anyways. So we're going to re shit. Fuck. You're killing it. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All good. We're good. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Melody of the Maelstrom, where there's occasional role playing in between the swears. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor has it their original swear timer is still going. <laughs> Tune in next week where they still can't swear. <laughs> I promise you, our beloved audience, the game moves much faster when we're allowed to curse like sailors. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Uh, you, you were forging his documents, and yeah. you and forged them, them superbly. It is... It is... It is... It is perfect. It is indiscernible from the real thing. You've got the you've got the textures of the inks. You've got the the little notary stamp. Like it's it's legit. <laughs> I, you know, pièce de résistance. I fold it up nice, perfect thirds. Slip it in the envelope. Seal it with the wax. Here you go, buddy. That was the most beautiful thing I think I've ever experienced. <laughs> Thank you. You can call me Fidget. Hi, Fidget. My name is... Gerard. What'd you name me? <laughs> he looked uh, at the document. What name did you pick for him? Uh, Orlis. 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 So don't get on a boat because he's Orlis. Oh. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> All right. I'm not sorry. I don't apologize. No, it's great. It's great. <laughs> in, the, in the three and a half years I've known you, I've never heard you make such a good pun. <laughs> All right, and on that note, um, so he just, uh, Orlis is now clutching his new identity. Um, okay, so I guess I'll, I'll um, I, I guess this is goodbye. And he turns to, he turns to you, Taylor, and he's like, So you sure you didn't, like, hit the colonel? You sure? I am sure. Because I was hoping there was going to be, a, like, a, a couple of platinum in there for me, but, you know. Unfortunately, Orlis, I have to see this through. So it may me. So may we meet again, but we may not. Uh, I guess really all I can say is, don't do anything stupid. Do I ever? Yes. <laughs> well, aside from this. I was going to say gestures vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> gestures vaguely to everything. <laughs> um, 
I am. I'm gonna. I don't have time for oh, emotions. Yeah. And he like opens the door and just oh, walks oh. <laughs> and just walks out. <laughs> you can see that he's like his neck. <laughs> he's like palming he's palming tears off of his cheeks as he's walking away. <sighs> he's gonna die. Probably. He's not gonna make it. Uh could you tell me the name of that uh person we're supposed to look for again? Kay. Kay. Uh, Cade Caxo. Caxo. Just going to make sure that I pronounce that. Yes, I did. Cade Caxo. Cool. At K A X O or. Uh, K A X S O? Spelling is K A E D E C A X O. Cool. Cool. Uh, well, I look at, uh, I look at Talon and like, you got a name. We Where's should next? get back. You don't want to find this Cade guy first? Could be useful to do a little scouting, but we should leave, we should definitely leave here. Well, I... They're not going to be happy about this. Who? The Thieves Guild. Well, just tell the other thieves go. They, they, they already know. Start a war. I mean. Unfortunately. And I just lost them their best fence. I say best, but it was more he would just do anything for the money. I don't want to sound rude, but are you, like, really good at this? Because, like, you kind of told everybody you're an assassin, and then you got the best fence in the city a different identity, and the Thieves' Guild's now going to kill you? I used to be. But then, apparently, I grew a conscience. That's Why? never a good idea. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's just get out of here before they show up. If they haven't already. If they have, run. Yeah, that's great. Running is really my strength. Well, Wait for me! I've got hide. legs! <laughs> and hide. I got a big head and tiny arms. <laughs> After you, friend Fidget. I, uh, make my exit. I think okay. I followed him there, so I know my way back, yeah? Yeah. Um. So as you exit the door, can you go ahead and make me a dexterity saving throw, please? <laughs> <laughs> Both no, of us? I can't. Uh, whoever's whoever's first out the door. Talon, you bastard. Um, <laughs> I my, think that resets the time. Make... <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh yes. Swear word. <laughs> Damn, is a swear word. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> How close were we? <laughs> I, think just, close. I think he's just oh, trying to make us feel better. <laughs> Did I roll the 12? Only two. All right. Uh, okay. Um, so, as you move... <laughs> As you as you move through the doorway, um, you see a shadow move out of the corner of your eye, and um, you immediately turn to address it, thinking that it's a threat. As a cat jumps down off of the crates and bounces off of your head, and just kind of uses you as a springboard to get to the next stack of crates that just that's across the way from the doorway. I'm gonna roll to punch the cat. You can certainly try. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it chose violence scared, today. <laughs> it's not cool. Like, <laughs> I rolled a two. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I punched it, it, the, the, the stone of the door. As yeah, you like, take retracted. a wild swing and then you feel your knuckles collide with the stone. And you're just standing there for a solid like three or four seconds just like... <laughs> I'm fine. Oh, 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 oh. 
<laughs> I hope that wasn't your forehead. <laughs> Are you okay? Let's just go. All right. And the cat just sits on top of the crates. You see its tail flicking back and forth. Because it knows what you just tried. It knows that shit you just pulled. <laughs> Charlotte? <laughs> Keep going. It's fine. Just keep going. Um, it is. Yeah, it just looks at you and and just like very it licks one paw and then cleans its ear. I I'm leaving. This cat sucks. Sorry. <laughs> this cat sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid cat. <laughs> okay. Um, and as you two, so uh, as you two leave. <laughs> And start making your way back towards the Boar and the Broad, where the rest of the party is waiting for you. That is actually where we're going to take a break. And hopefully reset the stupid swear timer when we get back. <laughs> I think you mean hopefully not. Hopefully...
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So, as we left off, uh, Talon and Fidget are making their way back from the secret room after having a small conversation with their new friend, Orlis, um, who has gone off to live his new life. Um, can both of you give me a perception check as you're making your way back towards the boar and the broad? My favorite. 21, all together. Okay. Oh. 17. Oh, sorry, 50. 50. 15. Okay. Um, so, Talon, as someone who just innately knows to watch your back, um, but particularly because you're definitely aware of the fact that you very much need to watch your back at this mm -hmm. moment, you keep a very close eye um, on every single mouth to every single alleyway. You look in every single shadow. You check every corner. It doesn't appear there's anybody following you. Good. I don't like this, Talon. I remain vigilant. <laughs> My eyebrow is raised. My eyebrows are raised! I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I, I, don't, I don't have him with me. He could be keeping an eye on our back. Who? Who? My little friend. Oh, your oh, yeah. little he's, friend. He's not here. It's making me nervous. Are we safe? We're almost there and nobody's watching us. Are you sure? Yes. Or if they're yes. In the, on the roof or in the sewer, you would know. Most of them, yes. Some of them would be in the sewer, but they wouldn't send those ones. Not for me. You're not helping. <laughs> Who are those ones? <laughs> <laughs> pray you never find out, little friend. Uh, and I continue to pray as we leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, as they are walking back towards uh, the boar and the broad, we now go back to the rest of the party. Um, where all of you are benefiting from a short rest. Uh, I'm also going to be listening in on any conversations that happen while this while we're making our exit. Okay. Um. So, the majority of the time, um, if allowed to sit in silence, Nyx just sits in somber silence. Somber silence is Bovidius's preferred. <laughs> State of repose. <laughs> <laughs> Though he is um, definitely helping himself to liberally filled glasses, uh, well, goblets of ale. Okay. Um, she, as, so as you begin to move about the room, she, she uh, finally takes notice of uh, the very large bite wound that she left in your shoulder. Um, and she's just going to kind of get up and awkwardly like walk over to you and be like oh, sir i'm so sorry i didn't even you were not of your right mind there is no grudge to be held i i still sit please sir i i'll i'll nod and allow her to tend to it. Cool. Uh, what did I just do? Attempt to roll medicine and click on the wrong screen. I <laughs> opened roll 20. What did I just roll? <laughs> oh, I didn't roll anything. Don't right, curse explains, about it. <laughs> I'm about doing it. well. I am doing good. We are good. Okay. Uh, you're gonna heal for ten. Oh, very nice. I'll, How much uh, time do we have before we can swear again? Don't know. Don't want to jinx care. it. Don't. There we go. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Um. So you can kind of feel the wound on your shoulder just sort of knit itself back together. I'll I'll moo appreciatively. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll I'll turn to Nyx and I'll say 
Thank you. I uh, was not aware you had such skill at these types of administrations. Uh, it's something I got from my dad. I wasn't really encouraged to use any of that particular skill set. Um, so... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of narrow my gaze at her. Not in a angry or, or, or uh, distrustful way, but just like kind of narrow my gaze and be like, you've never mentioned your father at length. Is he still alive? I think so. I think so. I, I was uh... hoping to find that out. Um before I got arrested. Uh, I should hope you are able to, and I will do my best to help. I wasn't tampering with the crime scene, just so you know. I am well aware. Major Rembrandt, as I'm sure you gathered, does not see eye to eye with me. And I and believe really tall, that as soon as I entered the room, he chose not to see eye to eye at your expense. For that, I owe you an apology. He is evil. I can confirm it. And his behavior has proven so. He smells like farts. <laughs> He's sorry. He's... You said the rotten egg smell last session. I did. This is <laughs> Nick's 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 genuine reaction. Oh, but so, was... you know, it's if if I go into a grocery store, right, and I go up to the cashier <laughs> and I walk away and I look at one of my friends, I'm like, "Yo, chick is evil." <laughs> like, you're probably gonna, I'm probably gonna get a reaction like, the fuck? "Pardon." <laughs> Careful, Thalen. <laughs> like, I saw me. myself. You did oh, catch yeah. yourself. Well done. Well done. But no, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn to Sir Domino and I'll say, uh, wherefore do you, uh, uh, do you come by this assessment? Well, as you know, I am trained in the arts of truth, righteousness, and all that is good. Blessed to Bahamut, the great dragon. And he has bestowed upon our order the ability to detect evil, of which I did so, and it is clear he is evil of heart and intention. Well, so I used would the utmost of respect. I would use the utmost of caution as we proceed because it seems the cards are stacked against us, because now the city's mastered arms, who is now potentially the colonel, is altogether evil, and I'm sure we're going to be on a short list of assassination if we're not already. In that case, it might behoove us to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Really? Yes! It's the right <laughs> word for the situation. I just, I, I just pictured this as a cartoon where he says, behoove us, and then it just cuts to every single face just straight. Wow. Like, <laughs> now that we're done cutting to every single face. <laughs> yeah. I just do the, the office looking in the camera. Sorry. In that case, it might behoove us to more rapidly rejoin our companion. And I'll turn to the homunculus on my shoulder and whisper. Yay! Uh, Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you almost accidentally fucking reset it with like a minute left. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> you were like, Are what we... the f? And I was like, no! <laughs> uh, the, the last possible uh, syllable that you could have caught yourself on. Please, God, no! <laughs> Back to the back to the right. character though. I'll turn to the little homunculus on my shoulder and I'll whisper, "Fidget, do you hear me?" Uh, 
So, okay. Fidget, before you respond, I've got a question mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Do you want Talon to know that you well, are it. speaking to the... Yeah. <clears throat> Um, there's no way for you to respond, which is the problem. Yeah. But there's also just the innate knee-jerk reaction of, you know, if somebody asks you a question, the majority of the time you answer. Because you can, you know, it's when you're doing you know, an ear test, right? A hearing test for kids and they're saying they can't really hear. And so you turn the volume way down and you're like, hey, can you hear me? And they're like, yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't really let him know. Well, if, if I don't receive a response back, I'll just go. Uh, I'll tell, I'll tell my, uh, my homunculus to tap his neck twice. There you go. Okay. Oh. So, um, the small origami creature just kind of sort of jitters back to life. Um, it's been pretty stagnant up until this point. It jitters back to life and, like, creeps over towards your neck and just... If two means yes, say yes again. Are you on your way back? I think we should develop Morse code. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do not have the sobriety for that. <laughs> I'm gonna look up what yes is in Morse code. <laughs> Please let it be doot doot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just doot doot. Um so the one uh, you really need to remember is three short ones and then three long ones and then three short ones. Yeah, we'll be using that a lot. Uh, or just, tap... like, just send three. <laughs> <laughs> tap for... one. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> tap once for under ten minutes away, twice for under thirty minutes away, and thrice for over an hour away. Uh, now I know the way. Can I gauge this? I think she told you to tap once. Tap once? Tap once. Yeah. I'll turn to the rest of the room and I'll say, they are only ten minutes away. Well, we should prepare ourselves to venture forth based on what we learn from them. Agreed. I'll then, I'll then turn back to the homunculus and say, have you gained any useful information? Uh... I don't really know, so I'm not going to respond. I'm going to leave the 10 minutes just open. So the homunculus just kind of crawls back and settles down. I will take it he cannot respond any further. Let us wait for their return. Okay. Um, so is, uh, is there anything else? that anybody wants to do or say before uh, Fidget and Talon make their way back to the bar. I'm going to take that as a no. Just <laughs> 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 love stunned silence. It's great. It's pretty um, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a no. That's a definite no. All right. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, as you guys make your way um, through the board, like the, you go through the front door and you're making your way through uh, towards the back room, um, you can see that one particular bard is somehow still playing. Um, <laughs> he hasn't been like told to like bugger off or that his songs are too like brash. Um, so oh, he. <laughs> the word for. <laughs> um, so he's actually just strumming on his um, on his guitar lyre ancient medieval just dulcimer <laughs> um, oh no 
And uh, he appears to be singing something in particular. It's, uh, though it's, um, I don't remember. One, here's a sanding stone. You know he's only calling because he's drunk and alone. Two, don't let him in. You'll have to kick him out again. Three, don't let him cast friends. You know you're going to wake up in his bed in the morning. And if you're under him, you ain't getting over him. I've got bar rules, I've got them. And then he just sh like starts shredding on his musical instrument. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd goes absolutely wild. Um, yeah, that's just kind of you passing through. Yeah, bar. I stop for a minute. Tap my foot. <laughs> just, there's a, a bunch of gold coins just kind of rattle off of the surface of the table as he just absolutely shreds a guitar solo that doesn't belong with the song, but he does it anyways because he's intoxicated. And uh, a good a guitar solo is always a good guitar solo. <laughs> um, as I'm as I'm watching the the events, uh, kind of something kind of suddenly occurs to Fidget. I kind of nudge Talon. Kind of pull him to a stop a little bit. Yes. Seems like uh, a full. How long is this party? Full week. About. About that. Three days. That's full Three week. Days. It's a, it is a week. It is a week. You can do a yes, lot of crazy shit. Week, yes. You can do a lot of crazy shit when a city is drunk for a week, can't you? Absolutely, we can. Hmm. What do you have in mind? <laughs> I'm thinking more what everyone had in mind for the colonel. Oh, yes. Wonder what else could be going on around here. Oh, there's usually many things. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Thank you, thank you. She's just stacking them up now. We're doomed. <laughs> yeah, we're doomed. Yes, I still have two. <laughs> I have not forgotten. Well, I'm I'm gonna plan my song for next session. So. <laughs> I I may or may not have um, decided to do that on the way home in my car. <laughs> but I thank you for your your gracious. Uh, Generosity <laughs> to my musical ability. Anywho, um, <laughs> so uh, you guys make your way towards the back room. Yes. Okay. Uh, so everybody's kind of just sitting in the room waiting. Uh, Nix has gone back to her chair with her back <laughs> against the wall facing the window as she was instructed. And she I... gives you a smoldering look as you enter the room, Talon. As I hear the door handle, I turn to face the door with my hand on the hilt of my greatsword, just making sure. Okay. And I'll release my hand as Rendell and Fidget walk in. Uh, Rendell. Sorry. Taylor. Rendell's <laughs> name is on the screen in front of me. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh. For this conversation, who did that? Frickin' Ben. <laughs> I'm gonna roll to swear, see what happens. No! <laughs> uh. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, the timer we just... may be completed next session. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do our best. We got this. It's fine. Okay. As I lower my hand, I'll say, Welcome back. I hope you had a productive journey. Talon almost made us. What? That's what you did. You almost gave up. I all the never mentioned away. anybody but you. You gave up way too much to someone who was already a part of the Thieves' Guild in an area of town that was owned by the Thieves' Guild. Chance, Fidget, let me, in, let me introduce you to Stormfell's Thieves' Guild. They already, as soon as you enter the city, they know everything about you. Well, that doesn't mean we have I to didn't give them anything they didn't already know. 
We are all well aware of the talents of the Thieves' Guild. What I want to know is, did your talents elicit any information upon which we can act? Actually, Fidget's talents got us the information. I will give him full credit for this. I'll not approvingly towards Fidget. What is the name? Cade. Cade Caxos. Caxo. Cade Caxo, yeah. Caxo. I'll roll that over in my mouth for a moment. Caxo. <laughs> and I'll 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 rack my memory. Have I heard of this Cade Caxo at any point? Give me a history check. It's always history. Well, Can I roll a history check? Yeah, go that's for a, it. It's a 13. Sweet. 13? I'm just going to wait for everybody else who wants to roll as well. And mm-hmm. I'll just uh, answer all of you individually yet well. at the same time. Natural 18. Well, I'm not well. She's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> She's too busy staring down Taylor. Seven. Yeah, she's She's too busy seething with rage. Trying to burn a (laughs) hole in your retinas with hers. (laughs) Through the back of my head. Just. If eyes were the barrel of a gun, (laughs) I rolled a three. You'd be full of holes. You would be dead. (laughs) You would be unalive. Um. Okay. So thirteen. I rolled a twelve. Twelve. Three. I mean, it's technically a seven, but I don't think domino, that I think seven. It okay. Natural um, eighteen. Okay. So, as all of you rack your brains trying to discern whether or not you've heard this name before, it does not ring a bell. Hmm. Okay. I can't say that I've ever heard of this person. I'll turn to a uh, Nix. And I'll ask her, you, uh, you are the sergeant of the garrison here. Do you know anything about a Cade Caxo? Never heard that name before in my life. Shame. What did you learn about this person? Whoever they are, oh they, want, they wanted the sergeant... And her mother dead. Well then, we have no choice but to learn whatever we can about them. Absolutely. Although, although my, our informant was very perturbed, let's say, to hear that I had not carried it out when I told him that the colonel was dead. So Nyx chooses that moment to stand up. And she stands up so aggressively, the chair just kind of thwacks against the wall and then falls to its side with a loud clatter. Um, And she crosses the room and uh, makes a grab for the front of your shirt. I'll attempt to grab her hand. Stop. Roll me a, roll me, okay. Roll me a strength check, Bavidius. And I have a point of luck. I know you do. Uh, I um, on a spare timer. That's a 19 on the first one. Oh, wow. Five on the second one. Yeah, so uh, 19 um, for a total of 24. I'm waiting for this strength check to go through. Why are you not going to... Oh, okay. Um, the first one appears to be an eight. Okay. Um, so you reach out to try and grab her, and she just shoulders through you. Just goes directly through you. She just hits you with her shoulder and shoves you out of the way simultaneously while her other hand grabs, uh, Talon by the front of his shirt. Talon, you can go ahead and make me a strength check as well. (laughs) If you would like to resist. Or you can make a dexterity check. Um, to avoid being grabbed or to resist being grabbed, whichever you prefer. I'm going to make the dexterity check. And I'm going to use my other point of luck, because that was a five. Fourteen. I rolled a fifteen on the die for a total of twenty. 
Hold on, I gotta look to see if I can have a dick <laughs> ah. She is angry, don't mess with her right now. Um, so, she just shoulders Bavidius aside, and then you try to dart out of the way, but she just catches you by the front of your shirt. Um, she looks at you, and she's going to say, you're going to tell me which of your fucking friends killed my mom. I think we're still on a swear timer. I know. <laughs> Nix, I assure you, I do not know. I asked if anyone else had been given the contract, and when I said somebody else had killed your mother, my informant was shocked because I was the only one with the contract. So clearly, this Cade Caxo has given the contract out to others instead of just the Stormfell Thieves Guild. I, actually I know you're angry right now, but I need you to move back to the wall because I know that they will be, they, that they will be coming after me for because I've broken code. Don't I don't I don't think this is one do. I'm I don't just, think this is one hold on, everybody. I don't think this is one faction. She like <laughs> she breaks eye contact with Talon. You now look down at you. She has not let go of the front of your shirt, by the way, Talon. She looks she looks down at you, Fidget. If the Thieves Guild got a contract and they didn't follow through. I don't think that this was just, this is just one group trying to make a move. How often does this party happen? Once every 10 years. That's a lot of interested parties waiting a long time to do this on a day like today. I don't think this is just one group. I think we're dealing with a conspiracy. The Archmage is in, in on it. The Magistrate's in on it. Something else is going on um, They stand Nick's to benefit very, the most. Nix very slowly just um, uncurls her fingers and lets you go. I will step forward to Nix and say... While it is as uncommon for me as it is for you to trust such unpleasant elements of our society, uh, our friend, and I'll emphasize the word friend, our friend, Talon here, has chosen to do the right thing and turn his career upside down to help you find justice. I choose to give him the opportunity to lend that aid. I would encourage you to do the same. I already used my two points of luck, but go ahead and roll me a persuasion. <laughs> Sorry, you want a persuasion? Uh, Is that what you said? Okay. Uh, with advantage, because it's coming from you. <laughs> okay. It rolled out of the thing, that's why you heard me roll twice. Just... Oh! <laughs> one, uh, one of those is a 19. It's uh, almost I spat don't... out my die. <laughs> I do not have a bonus for persuasion, so that's just okay. a 19. Um, compared to her 9, you are definitely successful. <laughs> okay. Uh, so she she takes... She takes a step back. <laughs> Still doesn't answer the question as to who killed my mom. No, it does not answer the question. But it gives us the first step on the path to that answer. And I'll turn to Talon and I'll say... Where would you suggest we take our second step? For sure, we need to find this Cade Caxo. 
but our informants told me that if we were to go after this person, it would mean, it could mean we perish. I have trained my whole life. I have trained my whole life to put this frame between others and blades that would mean them ill. We have lived in times of peace my whole career. I am now prepared to go to war. If that is what the situation demands. Do you have it? Good. Do you have it? I am not willing to lose again. I have lost too much in the beginning. Then let us ensure. And I'll turn to Nyx and I'll say again, let us ensure we position ourselves to win. Of all your underworld contacts, who would be the best informed? other than the one from whom you have just come. Well, he's off the board anyway. <sighs> if any of them will if any of them will still talk to me. It'll be who would it be? Whoever is most likely to talk to a minotaur holding them five feet in the air. No, you wouldn't have to, nor would you get the chance. It's a pretty long list of people. (laughs) (laughs) This is a very long list, but the person that would be the most informed? Malfia. Uh, I just throwing a name out there. Okay. She's very good at what she does. She's an information gatherer. And she really has no fear of reprisals. She sounds right up our alley. She is. She's not of the Thieves Guild, so she doesn't fear what they could, what they could potentially do. I'm just not sure if I'm keen on leading them to her doorstep, so... Wait, 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 wait. You said, is it in game or? Yeah, this is this is in game. Okay. You said you said that none of your friends are responsible for killing my mom. I... Not that I know of. I was the only one given the contract. So what if we're looking in the wrong direction? What do you mean? Why don't we just ask my mom? Can we get... Can we get to her? Well, Fidget made a very good point. Now's the time. All right. What do you need us to do? Not me. And she looks towards Rendell. We're going to go with what I suggested in the beginning. Are you prepared to cast that spell? We need another two or three hours, but yeah, we'll be ready. Can you do it? Can you prepare on the go? Uh, Not really, no. Mm. Uh, I'll look out the window. What's the position of the sun in the sky? It is nighttime. Oh, it is fully nighttime. Is yeah, it like it's, midnight it's... or no? Before it's or after? around like ten now. Ten o'clock. Okay. Um, you so guys I'll are getting say... very close to the point where the alcohol is now going to be free. Hey. Uh, <laughs> so I'll turn to Rendell and I'll... I mean, I shouldn't be too enthusiastic about that because we're currently <laughs> eating at the arch or drinking hey. at the arch stage. Just tab. 
Uh, but I'll turn to Rendell and I'll say, Will you be ready to go by the time the moon is fully in the sky? Uh, let me think about that. If it's 10 o'clock, that's midnight. That's like two hours. Uh, you know, I need a little more time because I need a long rest for this door. Um, well, I also, also have a few friends who like to prepare for the uh, uh, who was it, the Archmage? He said he's under some sort of magic compulsion. Can't tell us what he seems to know. I guess, indeed. Uh, I have a few things I could try, so I'm just going to prepare those as well. Take your time. The moment you are ready, we shall depart for the morgue. That sounds like a plan. Now I'm going to go back to my book so I can finish this, all right? <laughs> In the meantime, let us all partake of this cask which the Archmage has so graciously provided. Okay. I grab a flagon, and then I hold it in the air. To the Archmage! <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, so, Nyx is, like, grabs the flagon and is about to drink, and she's like, I'm not toasting that. The justice for the Archmage. To the Colonel. For the colonel. As she drinks. Out of respect. And Actually, why am I pretending to drink? I not. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at Fidget over here with the water. Such a responsible young man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Is there anything else that uh, anybody would like to do within these two to three hours that uh, Rundle needs to prepare? Yeah. More toasts <laughs> anybody wants to make? Uh, I will go to the bartender and make sure that we all have a round of the sober up beverage. <laughs> uh, I haven't come up with a clever name for that yet. I have a question for you. I think I'm going to call it the rebound. I like that. <laughs> Hair with the dog also works. I was thinking um, the same. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question uh, yes. regarding one of the little things that I can do. Mm -hmm. um, now, I can replicate a wand of magic detection. I feel like that's going to be rather useful in the near future. Um, so this wand, can it be a pen? Sure. You can flavor it however you like. Great. You can have a I sonic have a screwdriver. I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm out of vodka or I'd make one. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a regular screwdriver. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I make See, a it's a sonic screwdriver if you then hand it to David Tennant. Yeah, that's right. Or Matt Smith. Matt Smith. Who is apparently in everything I have come to discover. He is, and it's awesome. <laughs> He's a purple man in Jessica Jones. He is. He's also uh, the voice of somebody in something that I keep forgetting to tell Charlotte somebody about, and it's going to eat me alive. No, no, no. It's That's something specifically that you will appreciate, and I can't remember. He's the voice of somebody. He is the something. Lord Commander in Final Space. Matt Ryan from Constantine is Edward Kenway in, in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I feel like we're getting off topic, though. A little bit. For sure. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, so <laughs> I continue drinking and make sure that we all have a round of the rebound for when we depart. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, the halfling bartender, he looks pretty exhausted at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll get this for you. You it have an, a couple of hours. Well, you just at okay. And he takes the glasses you back. Steam... And... No, 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 no. Once, once he's ready, I'm saying when <laughs> I go to the bar to order them, 
Okay. I'm going to let him know that he's got a couple of hours before we need them. You just asked, that's what I'm saying. You just ordered You're them. very busy, I can tell. Take your time. And he just like, <laughs> climbs down off of his stool and you hear him grumbling. People just, just order whatever they want, God damn it. <laughs> The only fucking person here. It's just shit. It's just, he's just like. <laughs> I'm trying to be generous by giving him so much time to he's, fill that order. The, he's so got the a whole bunch is, of people who want ale like, now. <laughs> the when you the as a server, the when you get a chance is terrible. Yeah, yeah. Because when I get a chance, I will have fucking forgotten about it. <laughs> I was always the cook, so when I get a chance is as soon as the chit comes in, and then I'm outside yep. smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I'll return to the room with our, our, our sober up drinks, and I'll just tuck them away in a corner where we can get them when we need them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, so. You guys spend the next three hours partaking in a very large cask of ale. I'll pass they on do, the ale. Um, uh, so. As much as it pains Randolph, he is also passing on the cask. So <laughs> I'm doing it for more selfish reasons. All for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can assure Rendell that uh, uh, drinking ale is included in the definition of arrest. Yes, but it would be. However, I do not want to mess this spell up. Can you Fair imagine enough. if he accidentally like, <laughs> misplaces a letter or <laughs> accidentally casts raised dead? Glad to block a dead time. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> <laughs> it messes up the spell and, you know, she wakes up and just starts speaking Latin backwards. <laughs> what did she do? Though, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Honestly, though, if we can get this cleric to level 9 before uh, before 10 days run out, he could totally cast Ray's Dead. <laughs> oh, no, I have another one I can, uh, I can do with that. Uh, a gentle repose. <laughs> he just Leans over the casket, and he's like, hey, listen, I know you did a phenomenal job. I just wanted to say, you know, everybody's really proud of you, and it's, it's Ray's dead, not praise. Oh. <laughs> 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 right, right. I want to speak with dead, not animate dead. <laughs> we do not need deadites. No, we most assuredly need deadites. This is how you get deadites. This is great. Do your thing. We're good. This the is fine. Oh, <laughs> All right. So, um, you guys spend the next uh, two to three hours just kind of drinking in awkward silence. <laughs> I I would definitely. Oh, I'm sure uh, we have some degree of conversation. Yeah. I will pray to Bahamut that we will um, invoke no. <laughs> Um, praying in the corner. Offensive oh, to. I'm, I'm I love it. I'm I love it so bench, much. Just speaking like, with the dead. Like... I'll kind of listen to him pray, and I'll just turn to fidget at one point and be like, "I'm very happy. I never got into that sort of thing." <laughs> it seems like a great deal of time spent on one's knees. I don't know why you would believe in something you've never seen. I mean, there's enough crazy magic out there that you can just look right at. Well, he seems powerful enough. Uh, I, I, I will take his word for it that uh, this creature exists to whom he An prays. An invisible dragon living in the sky who watches everything we do, seriously. Can Rendell hear them talking? Yes. Yeah. I have seen enough visible dragons in the sky that uh, watch very little. Uh, but what their next meal would be, when I can say I, I find it believable enough that there might be an invisible one that cares. Well, can't help but notice hearing you guys talk about that, but deities are very much uh, indeed real. Oh, met one. Do tell. Well, it was only my first 
a solo boat trip without my dad. And we were sailing into Sapet. And we encountered some not so great weather. And unfortunately, we hit some rather large waves and I got chucked into the main mast. And then I went up and over. And I remember hitting the mast, I remember pain, and figured, well, I guess this is it. I'm buggered. The next thing I know, I wake up, I'm on the beach, and there's a man sitting beside me. He says to me, well, glad you woke up. Wasn't sure you were going to or not. How about next time you try and stay on the boat? And... I was rather out of it, and I just said to him, D What? Hell, am, I, am I dead? And he says, He says, No, not dead. You might have, you're very much alive. Uh, and I asked him his name. He says, Valcour. I was like, oh, I didn't know the name at the time. And he told me, Go into the, any, any of the cities, go to the temples. You'll, you'll find the name there. So, I went to thank him, and he was gone. And I went into Sepet, found out that I was the only one who got chucked overboard. So, fuck my luck. And then, I did indeed go to the temple. And on the wall, sure enough in the relief, there was a man who uh, was sitting beside me. Pull me out of the drink. His name is Valcour. He's the uh, patron god of sailors and favorable winds. I'll turn to Fidget and I'll, uh, I'll I'll say to him as I raise a glass to sub, uh, to Valcour. Valcour. <laughs> Cheers, friend Rendell. Well, well, I'd have a drink, but again, don't want to bugger this up. You know, you think oh, indeed, all. indeed, yes. But... Study on, son, study on. See, this is why I like traveling. You think you know everything, and then you run into somebody, and they just they prove you wrong. Well, Every I, I time do, I, I thought I've known everything. everything. I do always take the store with a grain of salt because, again, I got hooked into the main mast to hit my head pretty bad, so I may have just dreamt it all. I don't know if it was actually him who pulled me out, but I want to believe that was. Be it a dream or be it capricious fate, I am glad to have you with us, Sir Reddell. For myself, yeah. however, every time that I have thought I knew everything, I have quickly learned something new. <sighs> Randall's gonna get up and get a very small cup and fill up from the casket. Oh, I guess one's not gonna hurt. But I'll drink to that. Cheers, Cheers. Randall. Cheers, right? Cheers. And I'm sure the conversation will carry on much like this until he's done studying. <laughs> what are we um, all talking about? Backstories? This is the opportunity to do so. We could. Oh, who's next? Announced? Who's next? <laughs> so, Bovidius, what, what brought you to Stormfell? Well, it's been a long road. Much of my time in the military was spent in Guardian's Cove. I, uh, I come from a nomadic tribe of Minotaur roaming the savannah at the center of our continent. When I was, uh, on the cusp of my, uh, adulthood, uh, a band of marauders, who I later learned were deserters, 
from the Silver Shields had uh, come upon our settlement. And, um, well, you see, they they attempted to take us as slaves. And hostages, as it were, uh, to dissuade any pursuers that might wish them to return to their posts, or at least an adjacent prison. Uh, Were it not for a single warrior who led a band of pursuers, uh, I might not stand before you today. However, his skill with the blade and his ability to disrupt the many attackers uh, that fell upon him uh, struck with me such a chord that I felt that rather than passing the rights of manhood uh, with my clan, uh, that I ought to follow in this man's example and learn how to wield a blade in defense of others, that I might return uh, the favor that this one had done for my clan. Thus I joined the military, and after many years in Guardian's Cove, I have come here uh, to be discharged. And as you have all seen my discharge, I have untimely received. You didn't actually work in the city. You're just here visiting. Indeed, this is but my second time here in Stormfell, and uh, the lay of the land is not quite as I remember it from a decade ago. I've served 20 years in the military, and the last decentennial which I attended, uh, I was in the city guard. Which is the only other time that I have been in these walls. What about you, Sir Domino? I'm communing with my God currently. All right, I want to. Don't disturb me, please. (laughs) (laughs) He's just like "Mm -mm." talking to the dragon. We shall leave you to your. We shall leave you to your prayers, good sir. Taylor, love it. I love every second of it. (laughs) Got here, but how'd you end up in the city? We know how you got here, but how'd you end up in the city? I was born here. You said you're old. How old are we talking? Old enough to know how cool this city can be. The guards don't much care about you when you're not in the... Sorry, Bavidius, I'm not... And Sergeant, I'm not making aims at you, but the city guard themselves do not seem to care when you are of the lower class. No offense taken. Indeed, we are taught to, if not fear, then at least distrust those of lower standing, something that I always felt incongruous with uh, the honor that we were supposed to uphold. I grew up here. Right. I grew up What uh, was that? I said the majority of the time they're right. I uh, I won't respond to that, but I'll uh, I'll kind of shoot a dirty glance towards Nix who doesn't appear to be looking. <laughs> she, she is specifically <laughs> looking away from you, knowing that you're going to shoot that glare. Looking right at Taylor like, without it. Nah. Without yep. <laughs> Please proceed I, with your tale. I grew up here in the city, and I uh, I started as a pickpocket. I got very good, very fast. I started going on heists. Once within the Thieves' Guild, I started going on heists. 
one night. I was eager to go on on a heist, and it went bad. It was a simple robbery, burglary mostly, and we were caught. Not by the guards or anything. Um, we were caught by the owner of the establishment we were robbing. We got away. Most of us. The ones that did paid a heavier price. Some of the more unsavory members of the under of the underworld were given our names. And with that, they knew everything. I heard about friends of mine being taken in the night. But I thought I had hidden myself too well, used an alias. Never really told anyone where I lived, but they found me. And they, they stole from me some things that no amount of money could ever replace. I've got scars, physical and emotional, or mental, if you will. They beat me with an inch of my life, burned me with torches, and then made me watch as they sealed up my house and burned my family alive. I swore then that I would never take a job without knowing all the angles. That's why I'm helping now. Because things arose that were not supposed to happen. And I realized I shouldn't have taken the job. That's all I have to say. I turn my, I just kind of pull my hood up and turn my head. Bovidius kind of realizes he's been holding his breath through the majority of that story and suddenly will exhale heavily. But he doesn't say anything. Just puts a hand on Talon's shoulder in a friendly kind of pat on the shoulder of reassurance. But he just doesn't have words. Yeah, Fidget drains his uh, his flagon, and uh, and then his little homunculus runs down to his hand, and he just kind of pets it a little bit, pensively. I'll turn to Fidget as I see the homunculus, and I'll say, "This reminds me, what did that thing see in the magistrate's home?" Well, got nice digs. But that's why I think I think there's competing interests here. Something about a ceremony mentioned. A ceremony? I think it's what connected type? to the melody. What type of ceremony? No idea. That's all I know. All I know is that uh, someone was discussing a ceremony that couldn't be interrupted. And it didn't seem like the death of the colonel was part of their plan, but that it couldn't get in the way. Mm. Very strange indeed. At every corner, 
we find an answer that only spawns more questions. Well, I could probably find another way in. I would very much enjoy learning more of what goes on in that manner. Well While we search for Cade Caxo, perhaps we can find a way in to the magistrate's home. Do you think this Cade Caxo might be connected to them? It would be presumptuous uh, to leap to that conclusion. However, one cannot rule anything out at this early juncture of investigation. Seems to me like either they would either be a compatriot or some sort of opposition. Either way, they would know something. We know little enough about Cade Caxo that they may indeed simply be a middleman. Whoever hired them may have been in the employ of the Magistrate and the Archmage, or the other way around, and mm -hmm. all may have been in the employ of whoever hired the Thieves' Guild through Cade Caxo. There are too many unknowns and too many branches of this tree that connect to each other. Indeed. It is time we began to sever some of these connections. Agreed. Nyx looks over at Talon. Not that one. Sorry. Alright. I'll say it, because nobody else is fucking brave enough to. Talon! Yes? Just because you lost your family doesn't give you the fucking right to take mine. No, it doesn't. He did not take yours. I was going to. The only reason you're here is because you conveniently grew a conscience. Good for you, man. Aiden, would you tell her what you told me? Oh, you're making me remember what I told you now. <laughs> <laughs> you help people disappear. <laughs> Nix, if I had had, if there had been, there was no other choice for me with that contract but to take an ulterior motive to killing either of you. I've done it before. I'll do it again. All I would have needed from you or your mother, and your mother, was something of value to show that you were dead. It's what we do. We take a trophy. All I would have had to do was take a medal from a jacket and then just have Gerard, who's no longer here, Forge you some new papers. He's done it for me before. We don't talk about it. But they don't ask questions. Because I bring back exactly what I'm supposed to bring back. Proof. Palin, you said you are to bring a certain type of artifact back upon a killing? It doesn't have to be an artifact. It has. It just has to be something personal to them that the Thieves' Guild would know about. As I said, well, then medals from a jacket, a finger, a ring. What about the Horn of the Wake? Never heard of it. It was taken upon her killing. Is it possible that the killer would follow the same rules as you? 
depends on the sure guild. to steal this? Depends on the guild. Our guild, we need proof of proof of demise. A personal effect is usually what we do. Well, the Horn of the Wake was taken, so whether the Horn of the Wake was the target, although there was a contract put out on her head, I find it interesting that not just a button or some her sigil was taken, but a very important item, the Horn of the Wake. So it, it seems been, our murderer it has something in common. If it was for me to take it. Range, it does seem that such an uh, such a, a highly secreted object would have been the trophy in question, as very few people seem to know what it is or that it even exists. Perhaps the colonel's death is incidental. But yet she had a contract on her head. I would uh, I would gesture at Fidget there and say, hmm, let's not use that terminology. An unfortunate consequence is what I mean. Most unfortunate it was a murder. indeed. Of course it was a murder. I'm just saying, maybe the murder wasn't the, the intention. What if... What if it is story? entirely possible that the murder was indeed an unfortunate consequence of the colonel being in a room she was not expected to be in. Although it happened during the day. Y'all need to stop talking over... Yeah. Well. Talk. Maybe well, it form. seems made. Not you. Is it? Fuck. Maybe this horn is what they're after. Like, maybe your mother just caught the person in the middle of the act. Sergeant Nix, did you know of this horn? No, oh, I had no idea it was there. Vidius, you you said something weird about them tossing the room. What was that you said? Well, um, when I investigated the room, there was very little missing. But an effort had been made, as was made in your room, to make it seem that Valuables had been sought but not found. Only the imprint of the horn in your mother's desk drawer gave me cause to realize that anything at all had been taken. And then there's what she said right before she died. She didn't have a message for anybody or seem afraid. She just told us to protect the melody. What did your mother do before she was the colonel? She's, she's been in the military basically her whole life. For who? Her whole life. Just here, around. I think we're going to need to get more specific than that if we're going to find out what, what happened. Perhaps we seek a, a mystery, a legend, that is older than any in this city. Perhaps we seek some type of legend that is old enough to give the city its name. The Horn of the Wake. Stormfell. The wake is at its strongest when a storm washes in from the sea. 
Perhaps we should seek. Perhaps we should seek that sober up drink. But then, a historian. <laughs> you know, it's called the that's rematch. A good point. <laughs> <laughs> let's imagine let's imagine that some big storm was the namesake of this city. That'd be the kind of thing you'd want to celebrate, right? Maybe with a big party citywide. Every ten years Something from like the that. time of the storm. Hmm. Mm. I'll turn to Sergeant Nix. You've lived here all your life, no? Yes. Who would be the most learned historian in the city? You've already met him. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, luckily we don't have to talk to him. At least he's paying for the beer. Rendell can uh, remedy that situation for us. It seems that is our path. I can attempt to remedy the situation. There's no guarantee I'm going to be able to remedy it. It what? loses power, does it? Do we not? Does it not? I don't mean hack off his arm. Do you... As skilled as I am at taking arms off of mages, I have no way to know that the spell would not simply reappear on a different extremity. True. I mean, if there's anybody we're going to test that on. (laughs) I like you, Fidget. (laughs) You're dark. Please, give him a chance to pay for the ale. I'm what, he know already he's under arrest, so fuck it. <laughs> well, to the tower then. Now, just a thought from a so from another sober mine as well. Mine as well, f- fidgets and Rendell's. One or two could probably persuade him better than a large minotaur and a sergeant who is also happens to be a half-orc. I'm just saying, maybe myself and Fidget go. We've already proven we can work well together. We'll leave the homunculus here. Doing that again. You're not doing Perhaps. that again? I don't feel comfortable. Perhaps Fidget and Rendell would be best, as they were not with us when we met the Archmage the first time. Well, like that that's idea. true. But you have to remove the Gaius, because I, I cast uh, Truth on him, and it would not overcome the Gaius, so... Well, surely it means the... Rendell can try his spell. Rendell's preparing and... a spell so we can speak to my mother. I'm preparing spells. Plural. So I can do ever, all of this. Also, surely the... the Gaius does not extend to the simple history of this fair city. To the simple foundational legends of this fair city, what? you are you are mere died. party goers who are excited to learn about the town that we now celebrate. And if it does, then we know where we're headed. Indeed. Wise words, my diminutive friend. Mm. I can go talk to this Archmage, but I need to prepare still. In the meantime, the rest of us will secure the Colonel for you to speak to when you return. Are we agreed? Agreed. It's a better plan than no plan, so yeah. 
I mean, I don't think we should split the party at this venture. Once we leave here, we're open game, especially if Colonel Nix is with us or Sergeant Nix is with us. So we should travel. <laughs> well, strength the numbers. As I, as I see it, uh, Sir Domino. I'm, uh, though I may not be the only one with the contract, I do agree. Maybe we don't split the party. In that case, a course of action. I propose we all venture towards the Tower of the Magi. We allow Fidget alone to venture in to the um, uh, to ask the question of the history of the town yes his homunculus may warn us of danger should any arise for fidget surely you can communicate through this yes you can warn oh, us of any uh, danger that you may encounter well I'm just wondering, do we have to involve the Archmage again? There's got to be some sort of place where they keep all the legends, there... some library that we can access. If anyone feels confident sneaking yeah. into the tower, past any potential magical wards, and simply pilfering several books of history, I that could be my... a solution. I twirl my pen of magic detection between my fingers. I'm like, that could uh, help with that a little bit. We'll just dispel the Gaius and speak directly <laughs> to the man. We're trying to avoid speaking directly to him. I don't think you're gathering this. I thought we he were preparing a spell to dispel magic. We can. We, we Rendell will need more time, which we may not have. He said until the moon rises. For mm. the one spell. No. Indeed, the spell to speak with the colonel was what we were uh, waiting on. Uh, I can prepare multiple spells or just need the rest. Will you be able to dispel the Gaius? I've never encountered this spell before, so I don't know if a simple dispel is going to work or not. But from the sound of it, it sounds less like magic effect and more of like a curse. Have you any talent in dispelling curses? That I do. Do so. you think you would be able to make the attempt? I can always attempt it, yeah, but, but here comes the rub with that, is that if it's not a curse and it is a magical effect, I won't be able to cast both, because I do need one spell, or I do need to save something, something, so I can be with the sergeant's mother. Well, in that case, I propose that we seek out the colonel first, as the archmage is unlikely to be departing town, either in life or in death, any time soon. I have a question, Bovidius. Yes? More of a... If you would allow me, I will sneak into the tower and gather the, any information that could be of use. And you allow both Rendell and Nix to speak to her mother. It seems I like have... the majority of you would be well suited there as opposed to anyone accompanying me as I can easily scale the tower and not be seen. Oh, how chivalrous. I have but two concerns. The first being that 
Sir Domino has already voiced his desire that we all remain together for a level of communal safety, as it were. The second concern being, of course, that whatever books, whatever pieces of parchment, whatever information you were to discover, were you not supervised, the sergeant here would have no cause to believe anything that you presented, and no words of mine are likely to dissuade her of that sentiment. I am aware of this. I would but like to how, how, how can I prove that I mean well if I don't find if I don't prove yourself with us to tonight say. as we storm the morgue and speak with the colonel. Acquit yourself as an honorable member of this band. And then we shall pilfer the mage's library. As you wish. I mean, it's a, probably for the best that you do stay with us. I mean, you have torn a pistol for the Thieves Guild, so... Well, yes. <laughs> but I would also rather not bring them down on your heads for my <laughs> actions. I have a suspicion that we will be up to the task, should we be set upon by your former compatriots. There, you know, anyway. Depending on who they send, yes. And remember, the Thieves' Guild is not just... <laughs> thieves? Tiny tieflings and elves. We have many larger associates. And it's not so much the Thieves' Guild that I would worry about, it's the Uppers in the Underworld. The less all safe the... that I spoke about before. All the more reason for us to present our full strength against any who would stand opposed. I think if Talon wants to go alone, he's more than welcome. Stopping him from killing the Archmage. Sorry. Would matter. You, you did meet the Archmage, did you not? You saw he too? It's <laughs> Nyx. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've met him. I, for one, would not miss him. Might actually work to our advantage. We kill the Archmage, someone else has to be appointed. That person's going to get the same info. Let's not talk about assassinations. He may have valuable information, and he's clearly under a spell. So once we dispel the Gaius, we may learn valuable information from him. But I agree with the majority of the party. Let us commune with the fallen colonel so she may be laid to rest properly. No argument here. All in favor of staying together? Aye. Aye. It is decided. We shall visit the morgue as soon as Rendell is prepared. Once we have Agreed. completed our task there, then the historian's library, we shall raid. And that seems like a pretty good place to end this session, guys. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So uh, thank you, everybody, for um, your patience. I know I let this run a little bit longer than I usually do. But as the DM, you got to wait for an organic break in the conversation. You can't just be like, ah, and there we go. We're, we're finished. Ha -ha. <laughs> um, so <laughs> um, oh, thank you all. <laughs> thank you all so, so, so much for joining us. Um, and uh, if you like this game, um, feel free to check out any of the other games on this amazing channel. 
Um, if you enjoy vampires, there is a uh, Vampire the Masquerade game that takes place on Tuesdays. Um, and if you would like to um, retaliate for all of the unswearing that we were forced to do tonight, um, our mortal enemies reside within the game The, the Falskallen Knights. Um, so please feel free to show up and keep them from fucking swearing, because it's only fair. We're uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, you know, hit them with all of that bullshit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we need to hydrate. Um, I, I have a dribble left at the bottom of my cup. Same. Yeah, I'm clear. <laughs> um... And then on Thursdays, we have a game uh, called the uh, Knight's Ransom. That's a fantastic game as well. And we have a new Saturday game that's um, up and coming. It's in the works. Uh, if you're interested in playing in one of our games, um, that game, I think, is still looking for players. Um, so, uh, shout out to uh, Mama Bear um, and um, all of the other Patreon supporters that are absolutely amazing. We love you guys. Um, I am great while I'm DMing, and then my brain's like, oh, you're going to do other things? Premiere. <laughs> what that? You gotta talk? I gotta talk? You've been talking for two and a half hours, pretty much flawlessly, but the moment I have to do anything, it's anything like, no, sponsor or Patreon related, my brain's like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Just no. Um, well, big thank bad. you to our sponsors, d d Beyond, and well, a very... <laughs> Charminar.exe has stopped working. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, after, you know, 13 hours, brains tend to do that. So, yeah. uh, thank you everybody I'm for joining us. Exam. <laughs> <laughs> in a law exam. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, and we'll see you next week. Good night.